Welcome to the Warmaster Podcast, episode 20. Slightly unusual episode today in that I don't have any video to show apart from a small video um, which I recorded on my phone, which I shared on Facebook, and I will share in a minute. So basically, I'm having problems with my machine not printing properly. In, and the base layers aren't working well, layers are shifting, uh, the dwarfs' feet are disappearing because they're being eaten by the, um, the great devourer that is my... Uh, photon mono so i took a video uh, of what i was experiencing and how much the z i the z the z bar the z axis whatever you want to call it the z piece of metal that goes upwards is wobbling and it, I, I didn't think it should be wobbling uh, when i first got the machine it was wobbling a little bit and i said well i asked the any photon cubic blah blah facebook group is it normal to have some Z axis wobble and people said yeah yeah completely normal all photons have this well that turned out to be horse piss so they shouldn't be wobbling uh, any wobble is almost imperce imperceptible um, so the fact it was wobbling shouldn't have been happening and I will show you the video now and then you can see what I mean about the wobbling Some of the people on the Anycubic were actually genuinely helpful and they did say look it shouldn't look like that it shouldn't wobble like that and if you ignored the muppets that said you know like just be muppety things whatever you know like everybody had to learn to drive and if you've ever been behind a learner driver when you're driving your car you have to be respectful for the fact that they don't really know what they're doing and you have to give them lots of space and lots of patience and kind of fine i can i understand that sometimes uh, if you're getting asked the same question over and over again, uh, it can get repetitive and boring. People could search. But Facebook isn't easy to search. And this was a photon mono, so it's a relatively new machine. There wasn't a great deal of information available on the interwebs. Um, so you ask for help, and you hope that people are going to be adult enough to provide um, some help and guidance. Well, anyway, somebody said on there that it shouldn't happen like that, and somebody else said, my mono arrived exactly the same and if you open it up then you're going to find screws loose so i opened my mono up it's a scary thing because you're invalidating your warranties and stuff but this is not a hobby for the faint-hearted you know you're going to have to get in screens need replacing things need replacing over time lights need whatever you're going to have to learn the ins and outs of your machine so i've got it open uh three of the screws were incredibly loose that hold the z-axis onto the the kind of chassis of the machine and one of them actually fallen out and it was lying on the bottom of the machine so reattached those four put the machine back together it was a little bit awkward tested my um, exposure and there was a bit of the cable that must have had some adhesive holding it to the chassis out of the way of uh, between the led light and the screen and there was a little bit of it was you could see there was a dark patch but that was because i knew that was because of this bit of cable so I kind of went back in and moved it to the side and it's, it's just about visible but I, I, it's tiny it's a tiny amount of screen and um, I'll just stay away from the very edge on that side anyway upshot is the machine is now working 100% perfectly and what I would say is not only shouldn't if obviously it goes without saying that it shouldn't have been shipped in that condition that's just completely ridiculous um, but I'm 100% sure the photon workshop was a, causing the problem to get worse. You have to, at the moment, you have to design your STL and supports and stuff in Chitterbox, export it, and then bring it into Photon Slicer to slice it um, so that your photon can read it. The default settings for lift speeds was like six millimeters a second or whatever. And um, when when my machine was running, it, 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 it felt like frantic. It was like, woo, 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 woo. I said, like, Jesus, seems like, and you hear like rip as it's ripping off the fet. Um, I mean, it, it feels kind of like aggressive and like quick and like, whoa. Um, but obviously, as, as my stuff was wobbling, that was that the, 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 the aggressiveness of the lift was wasn't certainly wasn't helping. And I think 
uh, if anything, yeah, I, 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 it, it doesn't seem like a precision tool when it's moving at those kind of speeds, even though it, it means your prints print quickly. So the other thing I've done is I went to start using Lychee Slicer, which is a paid application, although you can use it for free in a more basic way if you put up with an advert for 20 seconds when you're slicing. It's much slower, the process of slicing on Lychee. It takes quite a lot longer, uh, but people rave about the way it designs supports, the auto support functions of the way it slices and stuff. One thing it did do when I, I told it I was using a mono and I told it the resins and stuff, the lift speed was like a sixth. I think it's one, I think the, there's two lift speeds. One of them it moved to three millimeters a second or whatever, and one it moved to one. So the actual lift times now are, are completely, it feels like a precision piece of engineering that's moving up kind of slowly. And that may in itself add to wear on the kind of motors that use the move it up, up and down the z-axis, because obviously the motors are in use uh, for longer at a slower rate than um, the, the, the six times quicker, but obviously for a shorter period of time. Um, but it feels like a piece of precision printing gear now rather than some kind of crazy circus thing. But maybe there's a medium there. Maybe I should try and find the, the halfway house between what Lychee's saying and what, and what Photon Workshop was saying. The upside is that since I've done this, used Lychee, um, and sorted my Z-axis stuff, I've had no fails. And I don't mean I've had no fails as in I've had no fails where the whole thing's a write-off. I haven't had a single miniature fail. So if I'm printing eight ty 80 tyranids, 80, 80, so that's whatever that is, if, they, if the units are five, that's 16 units of tyranids, the little ones obviously, shooty, termagants or whatever, um, they all print. They all print. And using the hot water, water washable resin, they all come off the print bed as well. The only potential issue is that you have a little bit of resin residue, um, sometimes in the deep crevices that are difficult to remove. So uh, happy days is what I would say. Happy days. Um, get yourself over to water wash washable if you're having any problems and uh, get yourself over to lychee slicer. And... Um, Use the uh, AnyCubic Facebook group at your peril. Although some people are nicer.